Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. United States Marine Corps Combat Veteran, Ellie McKenzie. Thank you, brother. I'm just going to take a little interlude here with a little break from the, uh, the music, the entertainment, which is outstanding and fantastic. And everyone up here has had an amazing voice. They truly have. Thank them. Well, there's a gentleman who is here, who came here from New York on his own dime, and uh, he was at Ground Zero. Mr. Tim Casey is going to share his story with us. Come on up, Tim. I'd like to thank the Power of One Foundation for inviting me to tell my story of 9-11 to you. Looking out on this crowd, it may be that some of you are not born or too young to remember 9-11. I'd like to take a few minutes to share my experience with you. I think I have a unique perspective as I lived in Southern California for over 20 years before moving to New York City, about six months before the, uh, the event of 9-11. I woke up on September 11, 2001 to a beautiful day. The sun was shining and there was not a cloud in the sky. It was warm with low humidity. It was too nice to go right to work, so I decided to work out in the gym in my building and go in late. My commute took me under the Hudson River to a train station several uh, stories under the World Trade Center. I'd ride escalators to the underground shopping mall, walk the length of the shopping mall from the North Tower to the South Tower, and finally exit up to the street level. 9-11 changed all that. As I was waiting for the train for the doors to open, doors to close rather, I overheard a policeman on the platform hollering into his walkie-talkie, do you want me to come over, do you want me to come over? And just as the doors were closing, he jumped into the train. When we arrived at the platform under the World Trade Center, the doors opened, and the first thing I could smell was diesel fuel. And it seemed strange to me that, that we had that smell, and it put me a little bit on edge. Um, as I was going up the escalators to the mall level, it, it appeared that there were very few people around. It seemed like the, there were too few people. This was rush hour. There's normally shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder people. I picked up my pace, and as I headed out, I, through the mall, I saw discarded backpacks with computers in them. And then women's shoes, had, they'd literally run out of their shoes. And as I got to the exit area, there was a set of stairs to go up to the door out. There was an Orthodox Jew holding the door and screaming, get out, get out, there's a terrorist attack. I looked at him and thought to myself, right. At the top of the stairs, there was, a, excuse me, as I proceeded outside, I saw burning papers floating down like snowflakes. I looked up and, to, and my thought was that there must have been a bomb that blew out the windows on the 96th floor, the tower, North Tower. And it was really gonna leave a scar on the skyline of New York. Little did I know. I was in shock and confused. And I began walking around the World Trade Center towers looking to get a better understanding of what happened. As I walked, I felt the fireball caused by the second plane hitting the South Tower. What looked like matchsticks were actually steel beams and coming down on me. I began running from the towers and did not stop until I reached my office at 110 Wall Street on the other side of the island, and I took cover with my co-workers. At 10.01, I felt the earthquake reminding me of my years in California. I looked out to see a cloud of dust and debris greening down the street was so dense that I could no longer see across the street. The Chase Manhattan Bank sign on the building across the street became invisible. It was like nighttime in, in just an instant. This was repeated 29 minutes later when the, south, the North Tower collapsed and it got even darker. At 11 a.m., the mayor ordered the lower Manhattan be evacuated. An hour or so later, I could see people headed down to the ferry dock to the end of Wall Street. I decided to leave the office and see if I could get a ride on a boat over to New Jersey, which is where I was living. 
With that, I became part of the largest water evacuation in history after roads, tunnels, and, and railways were uh, shut down coming out of New York City. Over 500,000 people were evacuated uh, from Lower Manhattan by 150 American maritime vessels that included passenger ferries, tugboats, merchant ships, New York fire boats, uh, and many private vessels. There were over 800 uh, American mariners that participated in the boat lift evacuation. This rescue was larger than the evacuation of the 340,000 American Allied troops at Dunkirk during World War II. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Nothing has been the same since that day. After 9-11, people were brought together. This was particularly evident in the, in the New York tri-state area, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, where everyone knew someone or knew someone who knew someone who died on 9-11. After 9-11, you could sit down in a bar and people would move over next to you and begin a conversation with, where were you? Before that, New York was a very cold place to be. It, it, uh, it, it really brought us together. <coughs> Excuse me. I suffered PSTD and survivor's guilt from 9-11. I sought out psychological counseling and attended for almost a year. Years later, I began to have a physical health problems. First, it was a bilateral pulmonary embolism, then cancer, and I ended up having my left lung and 22 lymph nodes removed. I'm happy to say that three years later, I'm cancer free so far, and I didn't have to undergo chemotherapy. <clears throat> I became aware of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund for responders and survivors of the 9-11 attacks. After applying, I heard that the fund was running out of money and the benefits would be cut for new applicants. I then heard that John Field, founder of the Feel Good Foundation, was leading a team of firemen and women, police officers, EMTs, corrections officers, FBI agents, and members of the U.S. Coast Guards as well as survivors to lobby for an extension. I joined a team of first responders and survivors to walk the halls of Congress and meet with legislators to plead our case extending the benefits for survivors of the VCF. I made three trips to Washington, D.C. with the Feel Good Foundation to lobby the VCF. The testimony of John Stewart, the comedian, Lou Alvarez, who passed away weeks after he gave testimony, Michael O'Connell, a fire chief, and others, was really, well, arguably, the, the turning point for virtually unanimous support for the VCF permanent extension as a standalone bill. It's very rare that our Congress ever passes a bill as a standalone bill. Normally, there's things attached to it. <clears throat> Finally, I was invited to the Rose Garden for the signing of the VCF as a member of the Feel Good Foundation. The Feel Good Foundation continues to support first responders and veterans. The team distributed 50,000 masks and PPE during the current pandemic. They brought meals to healthcare workers and are now starting to lobby for veterans sickened by the burn pits in Afghanistan and Iraq. I have to say that John Field and the, the first responders of the Feel Good Foundation are heroes in my mind, and the de their dedication and compassion to their fellow men and women is unsurpassed. Everyone that I was working with on lobbying had already been compensated, yet they were going down as people that, that were sick and actually trying to help the follow-on people that might become sick and by the, the events of 9-11. So it really was not something they had to do. I take pride as an individual with the power of one, I had a direct effect on a bill that helps so many people. Every one of us is empowered to affect change. You just need to step forward and begin. I hope all of you may never again witness an attack on humanity as, such as 9-11. I'm proud to say I survived and I'm proud to be an American. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim, for giving us a perspective that probably, well, I, I can't speak for all of you, but I know for myself, I wasn't aware of the 500,000 water evacuation, and also, but I'm very aware of, uh, of the continuing efforts uh, by uh, locals uh, in, uh, in New York that are looking to uh, continue to take care of, our, of the people that have been the collateral damage of the attack by terrorists on the uh, Twin Towers. 
So, um, and I'm happy that you survived, Tim. It's good to have you here with us. Thank you. And I just wanted to say there were a couple of people right before Melba Moore, there was a gentleman up there that was speaking and it said Zinky on his shirt. Uh, he, is a, he, was a, he was a SEAL Team 6 commander. He was also a congressman, and he's also the uh, administrator of, uh, what is it, Barbara? Secretary of the Interior. Secretary of the Interior, thank you. The brain doesn't work the way it used to. Just like my math isn't very good. Before, it was uh, 1045 here, and I was six hours behind him when the first plane did attack. So, anyway, I apologize for that. Who anyone who went, he's wrong, he's wrong. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. But anyway, right now, our very own, Andre LaFell Robeson, the Power of One Foundation. Don't be nervous, Andre. I just want to start by saying uh, I have to say thank you to the Costa Mesa Chambers for partnering with us and helping us make this beautiful event happen. Um, yes, please give them a round of applause. They're sitting in the back, Carletta. <laughs> and I have to give a special thank you to the Orange County Fairgrounds, Michelle Richards, Crystal, Jennifer. You know, if it wasn't for them, this was all put together in a short amount of time, because uh, we were originally supposed to be on Camp Pendleton. Um, and we will be there in the future. But I want to thank Crystal for being here, and we look forward to being on Camp Pendleton and bringing the, you know, the reunited states tour there. Got to say a special thank you to Barbara, um, Patriots Voice Foundation for partnering with us, and they're the originator of the reunited states tour. I just came in to help her spread it out, and thank you guys. You know, thank you guys for being here today. It just means so much to us because. For us, it was important as a foundation that we do something to honor the 20th anniversary of 9-11. I know for me, I was uh, just waking up in the morning, doing music all night, and just saw some planes going into a building. And I thought I was watching a movie. And next thing I know, I see the newscaster on. And I'm yelling at everybody in the house, wake up, wake up, wake up. And um, if you just really think about those who were of age at that time to really think about it, it was really a moment of silence for like weeks and days for us to understand this. For the first time in US history, grounds, planes were grounded. Not one plane was flying in the air. So for me, you know, as a foundation while we're here, we're here for the community and we will always be here for the community. So when something like this comes up, we definitely want to join forces with everybody in the community to be able to honor the fallen and honor those that are still alive. Um, I know that I got the honor to work with Tom Cruise. Um, he built a detoxification program and we did an event with the New York Fire Chief uh, at the time when 9-11 happened where we were raising money for the firefighters who were breathing in all the smoke. And thank the Patriots Voice because they bought the hyperbaric chamber that is in Orange County for the firefighters that is being used today. So that's just an honor. So I have a couple of selections. Yes, yes. Uh, I have a disclaimer. So during the video, my music video was not supposed to play because <laughs> I'm actually performing that song. But uh, I just have a few selections uh, in my way of honoring today. And uh, again, I just love and appreciate you all for spending this day with the Power One Foundation, Patriots Voice, and all of our partners um, that came here all the way from Utah um, and really respect them. Ready?
So this last one is just an anthem for Power One Foundation. Um, it's just something that I wrote, that I stand by, every lyric, and everywhere we go. And, and people think the Power of One is not about me. The Power of One is about one body, one heart, one voice. And the one thing that we really learned uh, during the pandemic was if you build it, they'll come. There were so many people out here that were dealing with food insecurity. And during this time is when we really saw God move. Because yes, we have the food, but until community comes together, volunteers come out there and help put out the tents, the people in the community feel comfortable enough to come to your distribution because they're in need, but us all realizing that we're all in need and that no one is no different from anybody else. So for us, having the honor to be able to feed 3 million people during 2020, it was an eye over sobering fact to know that, number one, if all of us come together, we can achieve great things. Two, we don't judge anybody. No matter who you are, your color, your creed, we're all humans. And that's very, very important to us. Three, for me, I was, I was born in a servitude. I grew up taking care of the mental and physically challenged. My family still does it to this day. We've been feeding the community, well, most areas of Orange County, for 17 years. So it's really our honor and, and, and just know that from the bottom of my heart, it's really our honor to serve our community and have a partnership with the city of Costa Mesa the way that we do and have the chambers and everybody within the city support us and the community members. And outside of here, we serve the city of Anaheim, we serve the city of Santa Ana, some of our uh, most impoverished areas, hard hit areas and partnerships that we have. So this is our mission. So we just ask that everyone continue to follow us, continue to support us, and please come out and volunteer because it's about being boots on the ground in the community. And everything, I do everything that everybody else does. I'm not no special, but we all just walk together. Power of one. Possessed about what you give. We possess the power to tap into the 
Thank you, Andre. Well, someone that's been there step for step with him, stride for stride, our next guest is Shawnee Witt. All the way from Montana, Shawnee. Not today, but originally. Hello, everyone. I'm the co-founder of Power of One Foundation and Andre and I run this foundation together side by side from our hearts, as he said. We see everyone that we get to work with as family, all of our partners, our um, advocates and ambassadors out in the community, all of the faces that we know and love and all the, the ones that we have yet to know. So thank you all for being here. This is a very important, sober day, and we felt it was very important to honor what this meant, what this day meant 20 years ago for our nation. I was 10 when it happened, and I had um, a pretty visceral experience of seeing it live with my mom that morning on the news, and it hit me really hard. Um, I don't know if a lot of my friends remember it the same way I do. They kind of learned about it later on, but it was a very direct experience um, watching it. I saw the... Um, I saw the replays of the first tower, and then I saw the second tower attack live. And I still have trouble talking about it without crying, because that moment, your heart just fell, and you could not believe what you were seeing. It was just hard to wrap your mind around. And my little 10-year-old brain, um, I guess I was always a writer, and I was already kind of writing some poetry, and I, I wrote a 9-11 poem at age 10. I <laughs> will not read that one today. While it's decent for a 10-year-old, I wrote a new poem to honor the 20th anniversary this year. So I'm going to read that now. For those who are old enough, to know enough, to remember. Remember where you were, who you were with, what you were doing. In that moment, we all forgot to breathe, but we will never forget. How that day went 20 years ago as the towers fell, our hearts did as well. The horror and the smoke, the collides and collapse. The lives our country lost will never be forgotten. The towers, the flight, the Pentagon side, wounds of our country, our family, our friends, the wounds that still ache with holes that still gape from irreplaceable loss will never be forgotten. The brave first responders running toward the dangers to rescue those trapped without a thought for themselves. 403 heroes were lost at the World Trade Centers that day. 3,000 civilians we lost as well the 11th of September, a day from hell. And there was the flag in the midst of it all, with the firefighters there holding it bravely in the air. Those precious people passed, yet their memories last. After that moment in history, we saw each other differently. We smiled at each other, held doors, nodded heads. We all felt heartbroken as one from all the pain so much unity gained. We rallied together, built each other up, let each other know that we are enough. Let this be the lesson learned that day, 20 years ago, and may we never fall astray. Let that unity be here to stay. Today we honor the fallen, those who committed to their calling, brought us into that unity. Those civilians and heroes of that day in our memory will forever stay. Thank 
10 years old, so that would make her 11, 12, 13. <laughs> Told you I'm from Brooklyn. We get to use our toes too when we count. Anyway, we have our next performer here, Melanie Andrews, and she has an ensemble behind her of in incredible, fantastic, very, very talented musicians. So Melanie, please come on up here, Melanie Andrews.